What's up guys, Sean here, and today I wanna to talk about something I get asked a lot about in my Twitter DMs and emails and, and live stream questions, and that is how much I charge as an independent contractor for iOS development. And this was something I always wondered when I first started out, and hell, I, I still don't know what to charge to be honest with you. But let me provide some context and some background for those that may just be discovering me for the first time and aren't subscribers yet. I've been an iOS developer here in San Francisco slash Silicon Valley for two years now. For the past five months, I've been doing contracting full time in the year and a half prior to that, I had a full-time job, but I was doing contracting on the side. So just to give a little context, I'm not claiming to be the iOS contractor guru. I'm just giving you my experience of somebody actually doing it in the Silicon Valley area. Well, let's get to it. As a baseline, I charge $70 an hour. Now there are some caveats to that. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, I started off at $45 an hour. Now this was when I was fresh out of boot camp, didn't have any experience, my first time ever contracting. Uh, for those that may not be familiar, $45 an hour, at least in the Silicon Valley market, is basically minimum wage. Um, but I was fine doing that because I didn't really need the money. I already had a full-time job and I just wanted to get more experience in development. And it actually worked out because it turns out this company that I did this cheap little TVOS app for, for $45 an hour, a couple months later, they came back to me with a larger app uh, using iBeacons. And at that time, it was like six months later, I had more experience. So I bumped up my hourly rate to $70 an hour, which is where it's at now. And they were fine paying that too, because I had already kind of proved myself at that cheaper rate. So that's where I'm at now. I'm at $70 an hour as a baseline. And when I say baseline, that's because it fluctuates. If it's a short-term contract that I'm like not super thrilled about, you know, maybe I'll go up to 80, 85. However, if it's a longer-term contract where there's stability or I really like the project, you know, I'm willing to go to 60, 65, just because I know, again, there's stability. I'm going to enjoy the project. When it all comes down to it, that, you know, extra $5 an hour, I mean, in the long run, it could add up to be, you know, a couple grand, but huge picture it's not a lot of money to like potentially miss out on the project and that's a good segue talking about some things you should consider when coming up with your price you know you, it's good to have a baseline price but then fluctuate up and down based on situations like i mentioned my very first contract i didn't have any leverage i had no experience so i went down to a cheaper price so for you if you're trying to build your portfolio you're just starting out i mean you should probably work for dirt cheap because you need to build up that portfolio so in the future you can get those bigger projects and you've proven that you've done it another consideration for maybe giving somebody a good deal at first is if you know this is a good company to kind of get your foot in the door with maybe they'll have more projects in the future maybe it's a contract to hire type position and you want to just get in there to prove yourself and also like i mentioned the longevity of the project like if this is an eight month project that's going to give you steady income as a contractor uh, you might want to go a little cheaper because you know that's steady income one of the biggest pains as a full-time independent contractor is always trying to find that next project i mean that takes up half your time at least so if you can find one that is stability for a long period of time you know maybe give them a little discount and i just want to reiterate these are my experiences doing it for one year part-time and it's about six months full-time and like i said i probably don't even know how to charge because when i throw out that 70 dollars an hour number nobody bats an eye and it's a good rule of thumb when people immediately accept your first offer you were probably too low so that's something I'm gonna work on. I'm gonna start maybe testing a higher rate. And obviously your rate's gonna get higher over time. The more experience you get, the better your portfolio gets. But yeah, that's where I'm currently at. I'm currently at $70 an hour as a baseline for those that wanna know or for those that might be looking for where to start. I have heard from other contractors that iOS development here in San Francisco, anywhere from 50 to 150. I mean, that's a pretty wide range, but anywhere in that range is probably normal. Obviously there's, you know, anomalies that can charge much more than that, that have, you know, tons of experience or very specialized. But uh, yeah, two years into my career, I'm at 70. I'm gonna probably try to bump that up the next time I'm, I'm in contract negotiations, maybe to 80, um, just to test it out. Cause like I said, nobody's even batted an eye at 70. So we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll do an update here in a year on my contracting rate. I do expect it to, you know, not be the same a year, year or two from now. So that's where I'm at, 70 an hour. All right, if you found this at all useful, go and hit subscribe. I put out new videos all the time.